All right, hello. It's about 8.30. Welcome to the weather update uh, here uh, on the 22nd of July, June. Uh, I accidentally said July. Um, you can see the rain is finally starting to move out. Let's, uh, yeah, let's show this radar here. You can see the rain finally moving out. Still some lingering sprinkles around. Really hard. Had a lot of trouble getting rid of the rain today. Very slow moving front. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, here's the sad light, and you can see this front is just crawling uh, through our area, and I mean crawling. We have this clear air over here, but we're still stuck in this stream of moisture here uh, as we're dealing with this very, very slow-moving cold frontal boundary uh, that is moving, but very slowly, uh, very, very slowly. And uh, looking at some of the rain I got caught in, uh, I didn't think I'd have to get caught in. Uh, you can see here uh, some rain at Maryland Avenue Station. Uh, that uh, I was there around, uh, let's see, I was going, I thought we were done with it, and I got to Maryland Avenue, and it starts pouring again, uh, and this is around uh, 646, so yeah, that's the train I got off of, uh, so uh, uh, let's go past these pictures, just to show you the sky, yeah, we had some trains coming through, but you can see the sky, uh, just uh, dark skies, and you can see some bright brightening there, this is the Maryland Avenue station, and some of these had nothing to do with the weather. <laughs> uh, but you can see here, uh, there, there you go. So here's the pictures of the sky. Uh, just a dark, threatening looking sky uh, over the area. And this was, again, around 7 o'clock. Had to kind of wait it out because it was pouring for a while. And then it looked like it was going to pour again. We had these really just ominous looking clouds uh, over the area. You could see uh, here they are again. So kind of all, all, look at this. I mean, this was pretty ominous looking here. Uh, I have a short video of what it looked like as well. So once again, another look at the radar here. Some of these uh, cells that are, uh, it is moving away, but it's just a very slow moving front. Uh, so let's go look at the wider view of the satellite. And you can see we have dry air that will eventually be working its way inland. Uh, this is what's left of Claudette. I guess what's Claudette might still be considered a tropical storm at this point. I'll have to check. Uh, I don't think so. It's probably extra tropical. Uh, but you can see here, uh, this is the air mass. We got a dry air mass that we will be uh, in, that will be in place for a while. Uh, so uh, after we get done with this rain, which we did need, um, all right. Let me go to the trop tropical. Nope, nope. It's uh, it's off the it's off the thing. So it's not. It's extra tropical now. Uh, so let's go to uh, the uh, observations across the area. Uh, and temperatures have dropped. Uh, it was quite warm and humid this morning, but now it's only in the low 60s. Uh, the, the humidity has come down. Uh, well, dew points are still, I mean, it's not dry, but dew points are down compared to where they were. We got dew points around 60 degrees. Uh, but it was quite warm earlier. Uh, it was quite warm earlier. Uh, and uh, it's cooler over Jersey, too. So let's go take a look at what those high temperatures were today. Uh, because it was uh, quite a hot day across. Uh, it was hot in the morning. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we got up to around 81 degrees, but it was very humid and very muggy. Um, so 78. Uh, so, yeah, East End also got low 80s. Uh, so, yeah, it was quite, and it was quite humid. We're going to look at some of these observations, too. Let's see what the city wa was today. Uh, so, LaGuardia got to up to 81, JFK 81, Central Park 77. Now, let's see about New Jersey. But it was hotter there. You want to make a bet? Let's see. Uh, no, not by that much. Around 81, 82 in, in uh, Ocean County. So everyone's pretty much around that 80 degree mark, but it was only in the morning. Uh, the other thing I want to look at is how much rainfall we got today. And the rain is pretty much wrapped up across the area. So, all right, no, I got to change that. That is not going to be accurate. Let's go from midnight last night. All right. So uh, here are the rainfall amounts, and you can see here we got a quarter inch in Carl Place. Uh, as you go out east, though, uh, only a quarter inch in Nassau. Some areas of the city got even less. But as you go out east, get to Suffolk County, some of the numbers get a little higher. You have uh, 0.50 at Republic Airport, so a half an inch there. And it's been a little dry, point, uh, three quarters of an inch in, uh, in West Babylon, almost an inch, 0.95 in Babylon. Uh, so the south shore of Suffolk County wound up getting a little more rain. Yeah, I slip 0.91, uh, so almost an inch of rain there. And then some of the areas around Lake Grove, uh, we got 1.15, 1.13, 0.63, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 
Uh, well, this is my friend's site here. I think it, hopefully it is 0.63 in North Patchogue. So, yeah, a little more rain out east. Uh, again, because the front slowed down as it was moving out east. So the, uh, also, the Riverhead area looks like it got around three quarters of an inch. But then as you get to the forks, it's a little less, more like a quarter of an inch. But some areas still, Orient's showing 0.60 and Montauk's showing 0.42. So, yeah, not huge amounts of rain, but uh, enough to you know, uh, help because it has, it has been a little dry and we're not really going to have a whole lot of rain in the forecast once again for the next seven days. Uh, so let's go look at New Jersey. Let's see how they did. Uh, looks like they've got a healthy amount of rain. Well, depending on where you were, 0.35 up by Lakewood. Uh, Tom's River only 0.14. But then as you go south, 0.62 at Lenoka Harbor. They had that pretty good thunderstorm last night. And uh, th this is... It really wound up hitting this area pretty hard. This is Harvey Cedars, 1.92 inches. That was a pretty good thunderstorm that uh, I showed some images of. Uh, let's see if I can get some of those images on the screen for you. 1.64 uh, in Beach Haven, so 1.17 in West Creek. So, yeah, Southern Ocean County and New Atlanta County, around an inch or more uh, where, the, where those storms hit. Uh, but as you go into the central northern parts of Ocean County, not that much rain. And as you go even further north into central Jersey, it's only around a quarter of an inch of rain, so they didn't wind up really getting that much rain at all. Um, but, yeah, it was quite a storm. Let me show you what it, what that looked like. Yeah, so this is the storm right here. This is what it uh, looked like from Seaside Heights. I was watching it on the Earth Cam, and uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, uh, there were some pretty brilliant flashes, and I even captured this uh, with a couple of lightning strikes here. So this was, again, this is the storm that went into uh, south of Tom's River. Tom's River didn't get it. But it did hit um, the areas, ironically, the same areas that were affected by that power outage. Lacey, Weartown, uh, maybe even a little further south than that. More like maybe Stafford, uh, Barnegat, uh, Long Beach Island, that, that, that area. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they got, they got hit with that storm pretty good. But, uh, and where they got hit, they got a little more rain out of it. Or should I say a lot more rain out of it uh, than the rest of us. I noticed there is a 1.57 showing here at Bayshore. But... I'm doubting the accuracy of that because the other stations around it are not reporting as high of the rain. But the bottom line is uh, most areas, not everybody, but a lot of areas got a substantial amount of rain from this slow-moving front and some of the thunderstorms that popped up last night, too, for Jersey. Um, so let's go take a look at uh, what the weather was like here, and we'll go to the one to ground sites again, uh, and we'll go over. We'll first start with uh, Carl Place. So I'll show you what happened here with Carl Place. Uh, so 62 in Carl Place right now, but earlier it was quite warm. And you see in the morning the way it was. Uh, we had uh, conditions around 80 degrees, and the dew points were up there too as well. So it felt quite warm and muggy. But then uh, the cold front passed, and uh, the temperatures dropped. The cold front's through. This is sort of an anna cold frontal pastures, which means it's a slow mover, and you have precipitation behind the front instead of just ahead of it. Uh, so that's why uh, you're having this rain lingering. But you can see before it moved through in the morning, it was pretty warm. And uh, it was warmer at 10 o'clock in the morning than it was at 3 o'clock during the day, which is usually not what happens. Um, so that's, you know, that's generally not what happens. Uh, but that is what most areas on Long Island experienced today. So let's go and look at the forecast and show you what we're going to have coming our way, which should be some nice weather. So we're going to look at the GFS here and uh, take a look and see. Uh, we have this big, beautiful high pressure that's going to be coming over our area tomorrow. That high uh, sticks around our area. It sticks over the northeast for Thursday and perhaps into Friday, too, though the GFS is now showing maybe a slight chance of precipitation uh, with more of that damp easterly flow that we might get. Uh, that high kind of stays where it is. And then start, we start getting to this return flow as we head in the next week. And, yep, the dreaded ridge starts coming back uh, once again. And we're going to be dealing with uh, heat and humidity. Um, and you can see that ridge. And we're going to have trouble getting fronts through once again. And a couple of, like, little, interesting little low-pressure systems may be affecting our area or not. Or remnant lows, whatever. Of course, that is a ways out. So let's go take a closer – let's go take a lo look at the jet stream. Uh, uh, and you'll see what's uh, dictating the, all of this. Uh, so this is, again, the GFS. And I don't even bother showing the Euro because the GFS just has been doing way better than the Euro lately. 
Uh, so here's that little trough that comes through, brings the relief, but then look what happens. The jet stream is a mess, and it's like nowhere in sight. Uh, and as a result of that, we are going to start suffering. Um, and uh, we also, and because of that, you'll take a look at this, and you'll see what happens. So here's that trough coming through, and then, yep, the ridge. Yep. So, yep, we're going to be dealing with that ridge for a while. And they're dealing with that ridge in the uh, Pacific Northwest. If we go to the observations and we just go to air temperature, we'll just do that. If we pull this out, you'll see there's a lot of heat out west. Uh, and they have some warnings out in these areas here. And it looks like they have a, what is this? Excessive heat watch from Friday afternoon through Tuesday evening. So the Pacific Northwest is also going to be getting into some heat. You also have red flag warnings in effect. Excessive heat watch and red flag. This is a different color. Uh, red flag warnings. So it's going to be quite hot in, in this area. Unusually hot. And you, you know, used to never, ever, ever see temperatures this hot uh, in the Pacific Northwest. But now, due to climate change, we're seeing that quite often. Uh, so uh, when we look at our temperature anomaly chart here, which is what we're going to be pulling up next here on the GFS. Uh, you will see here comes uh, we're below a little bit below normal tomorrow, a little bit below normal tomorrow, close to normal on Thursday and Friday. Saturday, we start going a little bit above normal. Here we go, a little bit above normal, but look at the nor Pacific Northwest and look at how much above normal it is. It's going to be really hot and probably going to start seeing more fires there, unfortunately. And then for us, we also are above normal. Though not dramatically so, but we will be consistently above normal uh, once we get past this weekend. And then we might have some days where it will be more dramatically above normal as well. Uh, so, yeah, very uh, warm conditions. And if we go to the Pacific Northwest, let's uh, change. The, let's go to regions. And I don't normally do this, but uh, the West has just been baking. We'll just go to the West, actually. We'll just look at the temperatures here because it's just been unbelievably hot and dry. And that trend is going to continue. So as we head into Friday, you'll see here that trend continue and it get hotter and hotter. Look at 90s in Washington, even 100 degrees. That is really insane. Look at this 102 in places in Washington state. It is never supposed to get that hot there. That is just crazy, crazy kind of heat. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to watch for uh, another massive uh, chance for wildfires in this whole, the whole West Coast uh, as we head later into this month, I think it's gonna. I think it could have the potential to be pretty bad. Uh, now let's go back to our area and uh, well, I'll look at the H triple R first. And I mean, I mean, there's no real sense looking at because the precipitation is kind of on the way out. Um, shouldn't even bother looking at it because uh, you're going to see that the precipitation is. I'll look at the 18Z run, but you'll see the precipitation is on its way out. But I do want to kind of highlight. That this is moving slower than the model thought it would. It's it's really a little slower than, than the model was predicting. Um, when that high builds in, we get nice weather tomorrow, and it looks like yeah. What is this? What is this here? What is this that's developing right here? Do you see this over here? Yeah, I'll circle it for you. We don't know if this is just an artifact of the model or some tropical system possibly trying to develop here. Um, and this is as far out as I got into Thursday. You can see it's getting kind of blocked by this high. So could it make a left turn? Whatever this is, it's not very impressive. Um, if we were to look at the wind speed, let's go ahead and look at the wind here. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of wind with it, but there's definitely some circulation that the HRRR seems to think could develop uh, on Thursday. And um, I'm sure it probably doesn't show up on any of the other models. But let's go to the temperatures. And get an idea of what our temperatures are going to be like. So uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a really nice day. Low humidity. It looks like there might actually be a sea breeze developing, according to this, late in the afternoon. Uh, but we'll have highs in the mid to upper 70s. Sea breeze comes in uh, uh, maybe in the evening. Temperatures drop into the 50s. And then for Thursday, similar temperatures again. All right. Let's go look at the dew points now. Yeah, this definitely shows a warm core tropical system offshore. Very interesting. Not that News 12 or any other weather people are going to talk about this. Not 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 on the TV anyway. It's only, you know, I mean, the, the, the News 12 weather, oh, gosh. Just a, I know. I shouldn't rant about News 12, but their weather just used to be so good, and now it's just awful. 
Uh, but you can see northerly winds tomorrow. So we got a northerly breeze tomorrow. And then you know, we start maybe getting a sea breeze in the, late in the afternoon. We'll have to see if that actually happens or not. But it does stay uh, comfortable with low dew points. And then you see more of that easterly wind with that low that's popping up here. So it's very interesting that the HRRR is developing that. Um, I don't think any of the other models are. Um, let's go back to this and I'll go to the GFS and see if it's developing anything there. Yes, it's showing something too. So it is showing something. And it actually, the GFS seems to think it might throw some precipitation and clouds that way on Friday. Um, so we're going to have to watch that. What about the NAM? Let's go to the NAM. These are all, this is the 18Z NAM. So let's go to the NAM and see. Yeah, it's spinning something up. And uh, it actually is spinning something up. And the NAM is actually de developing this little weak tropical system here. And then bringing it right into the uh, into New York Bay and actually giving us some showers later on Tuesday, Thursday. We're going to have to watch this. Uh, you know, nobody else seems to be bringing this up, but I am. Uh, so this is, again, very interesting. And uh, let's, let's just take a look at what the wind speed would be with this. It's not going to be a lot of wind with it, but it could bring the chance of some rain <laughs> again. So we didn't, think, we didn't think this would happen, but... Uh, what do you know? It just goes to show you when you got those warmer than normal ocean temperatures, what can happen? Uh, okay, so now that we're past that, we'll get back to that a little later. Let's go back to the NAM. I mean, let's go back to the. Um, let's go. Yeah, while well, we're on the NAM, we'll stick with the NAM 3. Uh, let's go look at the skies. Uh, now, we're going to have a little trouble getting this front offshore. You can see that. Here's tomorrow. It does eventually get offshore, I think, by later in the morning. So hopefully by 9, 10 o'clock, especially if you're in New Jersey and the western parts of Long Island, should have clear skies, uh, but might have a little more cirrus toward the east end. Um, and then we could just push that front offshore. And I think that's the problem is the front gets hung up, and then this, this system kind of develops along it. And then without uh, a a trough to kick it out because the trough lifted up that uh, it would go right up the coast and then we would start off with sun on Thursday and then later on in the day later on in the afternoon we would see more clouds and the chances for showers with this possible tropical system even though the National Hurricane Center doesn't have anything on this um, and they don't even have an X there uh, it's very interesting I mean what else could it be at this point when you look at the uh, look at the dew points here around this thing all right, uh, you'll see the dew points are elevated around it. So this is a warm core system, and that could be tropical in nature. And uh, seeing something form so close, and remember, it's only June, and, and it could actually develop some pretty strong. E We're going to look at some of the other models, like windy and stuff like this. Now that it, now that I see this thing is, is possibly developing, you know. Let's go to the RGM now. The RGM, let's see if the RGM shows it. RGM shows it as well. So all of the models are showing this. Uh, let's go look at the sky forecast on our gem. So here's the sky core forecast for our gem. And yes, we have a little trouble getting that front offshore. But I think, like I said, I think we'll, by later on in the day, we should uh, have no clouds. It should be mostly sunny. And Thursday, uh, we should have maybe a little cirrus. But other than that, mostly sunny. And that, that chance, those clouds, it, it, the, the, our gem's a little slower, but it brings the clouds and possible showers and possibly th late Thursday night into the into Friday. Um so, yeah, very, very interesting to see that. Uh, uh, very interesting, for sure. Um, and lastly, we'll go to the GFS sky forecast, which, again, is a lower resolution, but it does go a little further out. GFS uh, seems to have more clouds around for tomorrow. So, interesting enough, it has a lot more clouds developing <coughs> over, over New Jersey, perhaps cumulus clouds. Let me see the height on these, if these are high clouds. Actually, it has it as high clouds. It's not, yeah, it's high clouds that it actually has developing over there. It's interesting. So it has like another patch of high cloudiness over there. None of the other models are, are showing that. I'm going to have to look at some of the other models for that. But as far as that goes, getting to the weekend, we're not going to really have a nice sky. We're going to get that heat and humidity. Uh, we'll go to the dew points here, and you'll see as we head in, into the weekend here, the humidity will come up, and we're going to have that southerly flow. Uh, good news is it's a southerly flow. It's not going to be crazily humid, but it will be humid enough. Two points in the mid-60s. 
Uh, but if the southerly component remains, it should keep Long Island cool. But if you're in New Jersey, you're going to be baking. Uh, but then look what happens as we get to it. No, it's still staying a southerly f component, but it tries to go westerly. So we're going to have to watch that. If they c it does the go westerly, but you can see we're firmly in the influence of that ridge next week. So we're going to be dealing with humidity. It won't be nice and dry and in for a while. Uh, you can see it right to the end. It doesn't really get rid of the humidity at all because, again, we have no jet stream to move anything along. So you're really going to have to make the most of the next couple of days. Well, let's go to the temperatures now on the GFS. So uh, for Friday, we start uh, we pretty, uh, we gets a little warmer, but not by much. Uh, but by the weekend, you're starting to see those 90 degree readings pop up, particularly in New Jersey. Uh, if you're on Long Island, you're not going to see that um, probably. And then uh, the repeat Sunday, same thing. So the heat's mainly in New Jersey. It doesn't come to Long Island, according to the GFS, until we get to a Tuesday. And then when you start seeing that westerly flow, then we could be seeing that. So we're going to uh, there is a potential for a heat wave as we get into next week, I think. Oh, yeah. There is definitely a potential for a heat wave. It could be very hot. Uh, you know, this summer is, a, I mean, the summer has just barely gotten started. And look at the heat that we're going to be dealing with here. So it could be very hot as we get into next week. And we could have countless days, probably maybe at least, we could string together maybe five days at least uh, of 90 degrees or better uh in the city and possibly long island and if you're in new jersey string together maybe seven or maybe even nine days of 90 or better if you're in new jersey so yeah it's it's going to be pretty brutal uh so uh enjoy this nice weather while you have because it's it's going to get bad uh by next week with the with the ridge from hell unfortunately returning into the picture uh okay vent sky let's go here um so let's go use vent sky we'll go to tomorrow and uh, look at tomorrow here. So this is Ventu Sky, 1 o'clock. You can see the northerly flow. Um, this is the uh, based on the HRRR. But you can see it's developing somewhat of a sea breeze by the afternoon. Even over New Jersey, a sea breeze develops, which is very interesting. Uh, and it does show that sea breeze here is coming in over New Jersey and Long Island as well. Whether we'll see, Now, last time it overdid the sea breeze, and it didn't really come in until later. Uh, but we'll have to see. It actually is showing a sea breeze. Developing and it gets it pretty far inland uh, as you get to her in the evening. So off to see, we might actually get a sea breeze. Let's take a look at the cloud situation. Uh, that's the other thing with this front. That's yeah. See now this front, it, it's just hanging the front around. It's having trouble clearing it out. You know, one o'clock, it finally gets out of here by two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. So it's a little slower. The H triple R getting this front out. Uh, so we're going to have to watch this front for tomorrow. The, tomorrow it's going to be annoying because tomorrow may be our only chance for clear skies. Because uh, once you get to a Thursday, we're going to be dealing with more of that cirrus around. Uh, well, easterly wind on Thursday. So, hey, you know, you never know. Maybe uh, Thursday would be nice. But we're going to have to watch, again, this tropical system here. So if we go and we look, and we're still looking at the HRRR now. Let's go to the wind gusts. Uh, this is this would be your little tropical system here, all right? Uh, what just happened? It showed it up. Now it's gone. Oh, oh, there it is. This is your little tropical system here, all right? I don't know why it's not. Mo it's it, this model may not be working correctly. You know what? I think it's using a different model. That's why, because uh, that's as far as the H triple R will go. I think that's what the issue is, and I'll have to use Windy if I want to go beyond that. Um, but if we go back to the temperatures here, and we pull this, uh, this is uh, Wednesday, all right? Thursday, cool still, Friday, uh, but as we get toward the weekend here, let me put this like 3 o'clock here. All right, you'll see the temperatures start to rise. Here you go. If you're in New Jersey, you're going to start baking. You might even hit 90 on Saturday, not Long Island. So Jersey will hit 90 on Saturday. They're going to hit 90 every day after Saturday. Sunday, look at that, gets you hotter Monday, then we might see our first, uh, oh, this is Tuesday, so you can see what's going to happen, and then we're going to be dealing with the heat, so you, we're going to be dealing with uh, a long stretch of hot weather for a while, we'll have to wait until, you know, for a while for this to stop, once it gets here, um, let me go to windy.com, uh, this is the model that uses, one uses the European model, which may or may not show up this a coastal or uh, <laughs> potential tropical system but i figured let me see if it shows up on here 
And actually, I could change. I could change this to a different model. I could change this to. Well, we look at the European model. Can't really see it too well here. For me, if we go to wind gusts, you might see it. Very weak circulation. Um, very weak circulation. This is the again the euro, but the euro's track record has been just awful. So let me go to the NAM. Yeah, this is this is a little more interesting. Uh, so this is the NAM, and look at the winds around the center here. Uh, you could have some wind gusts. 41 miles an hour offshore. So <clears throat> this is going to have to be watched. This is the NAM here. All right. So, again, this is going to have to be watched. Look at this. It has wind gusts over Long Island. As we get later into Thursday, 32 miles an hour. Uh, and if this got a name, I guess it would be the D-Storm, I guess. But to have something form so close. Uh, now, this is just model indicated. But uh, to see the models pick up on this. I mean, something, something is going on here. Um, you can go to the G GFS, too. GFS is a lot weaker. The NAM wants to wind this up. GFS, not quite as intense here. But we're going to have to keep an eye on this uh, with certain models definitely indicating something developing, perhaps, off the East Coast. And when we go to Earth Knoll School, uh, you will see why. Because we're going to go to Sea Surface Temperature Anomaly. All right, ocean, sea surface temperature anomaly, and look at that. That's all you need to know. All that bright orange there, that means you have significant temperature anomalies. 7.2 degrees above normal. Uh, uh, about 50 miles, This all this water is way above normal here. All right, uh, and go to the actual sea surface temperature, you've got a... You got water temperature already in the 70s, uh, not that far away from Long Island, which is only June. It should not happen. So, again, this is all part of the picture of climate change, all these various things that I've spoken about. Of course, you're not going to hear about it on the mainstream media weather reports because, again, they don't want to they don't, they don't upset Wall Street, which obviously and all the other people that want to keep us you know, doing what we're doing with burning fossil fuels when, you know, we have to stop and we have to do something about it. Um, but other than that, enjoy the next couple of days because after that, yeah, it's going to be hell again. So thanks for watching and take care.